Yeah, but, I, but what, am, what am I trending on? I don't go to any of those sites. Have you seen the you Godzilla, Godzilla trailer? Yeah. The Godzilla trailer is amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. See, it's you amazing. know something? You, I don't need to see an Avengers trailer to sell me to go see the movie. I'm, right. They've already got my money. I'm going to see it. Right. So I don't ever I need to see a trailer. Well, they have my money for Godzilla, too, but um, I would much rather watch a trailer of monsters stomping the shit out of people than seeing an Avengers than seeing the Avengers trailer. The Godzilla trailer made me think of, which I and I thought it was fantastic. But um if they do reboot the X Men, Millie Bobby Brown for Kitty Pride, she'd be perfect. She'd be perfect for it. Yeah. She would be. Yeah. yeah. I just saw the Godzilla movie uh, like two weeks ago, the last, the last one. It was okay. I liked it. I mean, it Kong was, Skull Island was better. See, I haven't seen that yet. I want to. I, I, I want to oh, see that. Oh, it's really so. fun. Aren't they gonna eventually mix or something? Yeah, it's Godzilla yeah. versus King Kong. That's be sweet. Yeah, that which, would be sweet. Which again, we run into the same problem that they had when they first made Godzilla versus King Kong, which is that Godzilla's like 400 feet tall, and <laughs> King yeah, Kong's 40. Oh, Skull he's Island. Much bigger, first off, true. he was gigantic, and second off, they pointed out <coughs> he's still a baby. Right. Because it was done in the 70s. Oh, that's true. That's so, true. So they're, it's growing. This time, they're ready. Yeah. We're ready for... Yeah. Who doesn't just love a big giant ape destroying shit, but a giant it's dinosaur like destroying shit? It's like coming watching yeah. you deal with your customers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 shit. <laughs> anyway. Um, you were not so yeah. wrong, brother. And the new Captain Marvel trailer was great, too. Yeah, I haven't I seen did. that. Although I did see the Captain Marvel trailer, yes. Yeah. That's, that movie's going to be a blast. Yeah. And they moved the Avengers up to April. Because you know that it doesn't hurt my feelings. Yeah. Why? When was it supposed to be in the summer? It was May. They just moved oh, it up a oh, month. Oh, okay. But Captain Marvel comes out in March, and Avengers comes out in May. I mean, in April. April. Oh, just banging yeah. them right out, huh? And then Spider-Man: Far From Home in July. You kind of wish a couple of those movies, like Captain Marvel and Avengers, were just a little still a further apart to keep it. To keep it. Well, for us, to, who's going to see it? You know, who may see it right away? But to keep it. I mean, does, when Avengers comes out, does that kill the rest of the the, the Captain Marvel? You know, who people will be seeing it, seeing it later, like nah, weeks later, you know? People will be seeing it a second time. Yeah. yeah. And then they'll go and see then Avengers, and then they'll go back and see Captain Marvel again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I totally missed that in, in the movie. I have to go see it again. Seen it four times. I don't care, Mom. <laughs> I need to see it again. <laughs> Venom's okay as a character? Makes a good bad guy. All right, Glenn, I'm gonna get my haircut. See, I'm looking forward to it, but it's not a giant guy. It's like priority because I'm like, eh. You should get a haircut one even if they, even if they I think it's fuck it up. It's still just gonna be venom for me. Uh, I'm looking forward yeah. to it. I think it's gonna be fun. Do I think it's gonna be anywhere near the level of all the Avengers movies for me? I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Good. That's one of the problems I always yeah. have with Venom. Sure he's the supposed yeah, to be as strong as Spider-Man, not 14 times stronger. And they keep changing the rules. I'm like, just knock that shit yeah, off. Just, Put uh, him back to what yeah, he was. So Never wound. What you can't kill. That really was just a horrible movie. The movie was an abomination. And should have been an yeah. abortion. No, Clover Grace is too small for play the part of Venom. I didn't like the way they did Venom in that one. The problem is that he's a challenging character because he's a sociopath. They don't play him that way half the time. They do in the comic books, but in the movies, they're like, no, we should make him heroic. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. He's a bad guy. His number one goal in life for a while was to kill Spider-Man. Later on, he does a couple of nice things, okay, but it's still his number one goal is to kill Spider-Man. Yeah, maybe, maybe around Christmas this time, is like the I'll, Punisher for I'll me, just, dude. I'll just, Why the hell did they put the Punisher in War Machine's you know, armor? What, what a shot. I'm not yeah, going to read the book to find out. I'm just annoyed by it. The Punisher should never be running around in War Machine's armor. Nor should he be Punisher Stein or whatever they were calling him. Frankencastle. <laughs> Frankencastle. <laughs> awesome. The War Machine thing, awesome. I thought they wrote it real well. It was uh, considering that Nick Fury gave him... When I, the when War they, Machine says, here, we want you to do something. You use the armor. Nick Fury gave him the armor. He didn't well, what steal was it. Nick smoking that day is my question. <laughs> when they announced it, I thought it was going to be garbage, but it was pretty awesome. Hey, you know, sometimes you, you get to play with characters and change them, and you know some people get upset. No, that's not allowed in the comic book, <laughs> sir. The status quo must be kept. All right, uh, I gotta go. Nice to meet you, Sean. Yeah, Merry see. Christmas. Take care. See you tomorrow, brother. <laughs> oh, dear God, I loved it. I'm hoping that they continue on with at least one more season. I know that Netflix is getting rid of most of their Marvel stuff, which kind of annoys the hell out of me. They keep saying it's not happening because Disney is doing their own thing. It's happening because Disney's doing their own thing. But do your own thing and let us keep the stuff on Netflix that we're enjoying because you're not doing anything with it right now. Oh yeah. Their answer is, well, we've gone four year? seasons of Daredevil and that's yeah, all we really need to do. So uh, okay, fine. Good. Yeah. But, you know, you did half the seasons on other stuff that you could have done better with. We got two seasons of Nick Cage. Give me four seasons. The second season was pretty good. The first season was pretty good. Neither of them was perfect, but they were getting better. Yeah. I hope they go yeah. with like a more yeah. horror tone. Right, like I enjoyed the one yeah, Perlman. It was well goofy. And as much as I would have loved to have said this while he was here, yeah, Chris wrote thank the first draft too. of that. 
the uh, the originals. Oh, the new Hellboy, yeah. Yeah, no, I I'm looking forward to it. I think Hellboy is an underrated character. I think I more the movies were fun. I'm really looking forward to what they're gonna do on this version. Yeah, I think it's gonna be darker and more. A little well, scarier, but one of the fun things about him is that he is dark, but you also get that little tinge of humor. Yeah, they took like, a little too far with the last two movies. Yeah, so yeah, I'd like to see this done darker. He has a more dry sense of humor in the comics, I think, than oh yeah, Ron Perlman's character did. That's sometimes hard to carry off. Yeah, and I get that. I also saw those movies before I ever read the comic, so it kind of going back to read the comic, I realized it was a little. More serious of a character in a story. Now, did you did you watch the Watchmen movie? Did you read the book? I can't remember which one I read first or saw first. I want to say I read the book first. I think I'm one of few people that thinks the they changed it so it was a big bomb instead of a big alien creature. Oh yeah, Joe. They changed it so it was right. a big bomb because they hey, couldn't figure out how to justify cows. making a giant alien creature in that movie. How's it going? Uh, it's probably in the minority, the but I feel like hey, the I got the bomb was more realistic. Not that a comic book movie needs to be realistic. Yeah. I have no problem with what they did. Yeah. Already took I thought it worked just fine in the comic, but they also had an easier time building all of that up in the comic book, and that's a giant thing. Okay. You, if you can't build it up properly, you're not going to get not a problem. the proper take, tension, take for lack of a better way to put it. Right. They couldn't build not it up problem. properly in the movie. Now, they're going to be doing a Watchmen series on Netflix. I'm interested to Net see what okay. they're going to do okay. with that. It's not HBO. But I could be wrong. It could be HBO, yeah. but I thought it was Netflix. Either way. And I'm very interested to see what they're going to do with that. For the most part, the Watchmen movie was basically spot on other than that. They took like pretty much everything from the book, from what I can remember. Oh, I think they did a very solid job on it. I, I really do. It. I actually haven't seen the Watchmen movie yet. Negan is... Um, as the comedian, yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen the Watchmen. I mean, I read it, the it book. It was surprisingly <laughs> faithful to the comic book, despite yeah. the fact that they had to make some adaptation change. Yeah, right. I actually have it on DVD. We, when, uh, um, I think it was in Blockbuster, it was going out of business. I picked it up for like three bucks. Yeah, you know, so and it's, I still, I have it. I just haven't watched it. The guy that played Rorschach was brilliant. They handled a lot of it really well, and I'm saying that as somebody who really doesn't like Zack Snyder, period, at all. Yeah. Period. With emphasis, period, ever, period. Yeah. <laughs> We've heard that from you before. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, a few uh, times, yeah. Yeah, 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 a few times. As a matter of fact, you, a lot of times you're in a good mood, and then you start talking about Zack Snyder, and you, you, <laughs> you start getting, yeah, you start and getting get angry. Pissed. Yeah, yeah, you start getting angry. I say, hey, Jim, take it, take it down a notch. You're okay. Jim, yeah. smash puny human. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I finally finished the Avengers novel. Did you? Just this week. Yeah. Uh, and now, the editor's already got the first 33, 35 pages for me to go back over as soon as I get home. I'm like. Cool. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. I start back on the same project two days later. Right. Right. <laughs> well, at least they're right on top of it. Oh, amen. Yeah. You know, it's. I mean, they're already. Uh, they're I'd already. Rather, I'd rather get it done this way than wait six months to get the to get the rewrites. Yeah. Because you know? I mean, it's still fresh in your memory too. And then that helps. Well, it was kind of funny because he, he sends me a text and goes, "Jim, Jim, we really need to talk." And I got on the phone with him. He said, "So there's like 14 things that happen here that weren't in your outline." I said, "That's right." Because without those, that story made no sense. Remember when I came in and you were nice enough to give me a deal on the books that I had to buy? Yeah. Yeah. All of the stuff that was in there that I incorporated into the book had to be there or the book didn't make any sense. I got to say, I think the Hickman did a great job in hearing what they were doing to him on the editor's side, where they were basically just changing things and then making him fix it later. I've got no complaints about his writing on that book. Yeah. Um, I never made it through. Well, you know what? It's it's maybe the novel will work better for you, and I'll gladly bring you a copy yeah. if you want me to. Yeah. Um, you can do things in comic books you can't do in books, and vice versa. You can do quick little skip scenes in a comic book so that you're covering those seven different areas every issue. And if I tried doing that in the comic book or in, in the novel, the chapters would have been a page and a half long. I, I just think the way Hickman writes, he should be writing a novel. His Avengers run, you could have picked it up at any time. You you had to start at the beginning and read all forty issues. Or you couldn't, or you couldn't read. It. You couldn't pick it up in the middle and, and even get what was going See, on. I don't know if he did the the Hyperion issue or not. The issue was just Hyperion, mm -hmm. and I thought that was brilliant. But I don't know if that was Hickman or not. Yeah. Um, I thought it was again the best Superman story coming out of that era. Yeah, which was you know? Hyperion. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Story. What's that? What mean you need? Was a non Superman dollar piece. story? Yeah, okay. Hyperion. Well, Hyperion is, yeah, you know, is obviously a ripoff. He was, okay. he was done deliberately that way. Right. But Superman at that time was the new 52, which was the worst crap that ever came out of DC. Was that Grant Morrison writing? Okay. No, it was before yep. Grant Morrison, I think. Almost forgot. Might have been after. 
Well, whatever was the case, it was like when they were saying, you know what, we need to put Superman That's in a t-shirt with an S on it mm -hmm. and make him more angsty and, 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 and macho. No, you don't. Why would that dude need to prove anything to anybody? He's already tougher than everybody walking around. Mm -hmm. I'll stick with the Dan Jurgen Superman. Yes, thank you. That was the exact point that I was making to people at the time, going, this is actually better. Yeah. So how do you like Brian Michael Bendis on Superman? I don't. Don't? <laughs> I don't. He's just fine as a writer. I mean that. Um, Thank you. I've read I've read every issue so far, and my problem is we once again have to start with let's give him a new he's villain who's bigger and better than everybody else. Yeah, what's his name? The four dollars. I don't know. Yeah, somewhere. he's the guy that entire universe is run from in fear, but he's supposed to take on no, no, stop it. I didn't hate it, hate it. 10, 15, 16, I just wasn't dazzled by it. Yeah. Got it. He's a weird writer for me. Like one series, I'll think is the one of the greatest things in the next is like unreadable. It's not that he's a bad writer, it's just that he doesn't... He, every writer has things that they're good at. Yeah. Bendis is good at making horrible, horrible people turn into, into right, decent human beings. He's starting off with a guy that's already a decent human being. Let it go. Yeah, he's good with like Jessica Jones and Daredevil. I think he's good with those and characters. And Jessica Jones is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you know, be the entire run of that yeah, of that yeah. massive omnibus. I'm reading this thing going, this is some of the best writing I've ever seen. No, no one cares. It's true, you know, it's it's true uh, yeah. But that doesn't mean that he should have been put um, automatically in charge of Superman. Right. Put him on Batman. Batman needs some work. You don't like the Tom I King stuff, no? I, I like Tom King well enough, but the fact of the matter is you've still got four separate titles with Batman. Mm -hmm. You add them together and they make no sense. Yeah, detectives way different. Here's Batman yeah. fighting yeah. by himself. Here he is with a team of people that he's shaping into the next. <laughs> Screw you. Yeah. There's a guy in there now. That he's Batman. That he doesn't have time to shape comics. anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, I he does put them in another city and have them give him pointers now and then. Hey guys, I like the way you handled that, but maybe you shouldn't have killed everybody in town at the same time. I'm going to come into town and if I have to clean up your mess again, we're going to have a nice long chat. Otherwise, I don't have time to take care of you and everybody else. He's Batman. He's psychotic. <laughs> He's just less psychotic than some of the others. Here he is. Here he is. And no, it was written by Ewing. Uh, the best Superman story that came out at that time. Because he's doing he's a Mortal Hulk. Have you ever read this? I have not read that issue. Should I just buy it today? You should buy that. Alright. He talked me into it. It is, it is again, this was this was when the New 52 was going on, and that is the best damned Superman story that came out at that time. And Dale Keon on the And the artwork is brilliant, and the comic is brilliant. Oh, 34.1, so it's a little side story type thing. Yeah. It's, it's literally just a story about... Hyperion, Sweet. and him going through a crisis of faith. You know, because I've been living my life this way, and I don't know if I'm doing it the right way. Or not. All the stuff that, that Superman should go through, yeah. he goes through in this. I loved it. I probably will too. Um, there was the Adventures of Lois and Clark going on at the same time at DC. Was it common? And you know what it was? It was the original Superman in the New Fifty Two universe. And then. The guy that's Superman now is the original Superman from the New 52, who ended up stuck in the New 52 universe. He was running around not being Superman. He was running around in a Superman outfit, but it wasn't the big flamboyant one. It was basically a black outfit with an S on it. And he was doing all the stuff that Superman was supposed to do, while the other one was running around being a jacket. It's like the suit when he came back from the dead, the black. Very similar, yeah. Just not the mullet. And talk to, talk to Glenn, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a trade of it. But it's, again, that was the only Superman that was worth reading at that time. This, this whole concept of Superman being angsty is garbage. I'm sorry, the guy was given a perfect life. Right, right. He was raised on a farm by loving parents. And he just happened to have superpowers that developed his time and on. See, people I feel like don't appreciate Captain America and Superman characters that are... But Boy friends, Scout he's, he's, are like and, and happy and good. Okay. Batman should never be that. So he's got a very bitter, broken world. This going around. People see the billionaire, I'm going to beat the um, shit out of everybody that annoys me. Cool. That works. But Superman should never be that guy. Right. Um, Boo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, I've got perfect... Um, I look like this um, without even trying. The, um, yeah. I've got the powers of a god. Let me pout for a few uh, years. No. <laughs> this isn't the vampire to shot. This is Superman. Because people can't appreciate that. They want all these edgy, angry characters. I don't. I don't need edgy, angry everywhere I go. They do what? The Fantastic Four doesn't need to be edgy and angry. No. Spider-Man's got his own edge and anger, but he's also got his own way of handling things. Almost every run of Spider-Man has those stories that stand out. One of my favorites was 
when he took on uh, Mr. Hyde. It's just it's just a throwaway issue. But in the entire issue, Mr. Hyde is being Mr. Hyde, and Spider-Man is being Spider-Man. And everything he says is just pissing off Mr. Hyde worse. And finally it gets down to the point where Mr. Hyde has taken a terminal velocity fall off of a building, courtesy of Spider-Man. He gets up and says, I'm going to kill you. At which point he falls down flat on his face unconscious. Having been insulted a thousand times by Spider-Man in the process of Spider-Man not being hit by the guy that's bending girders with each punch. Brilliant. Love it. I'm, I'm touch and go when it comes to uh, Spider-Man for a long time now. Some issues I'll pick up and some I won't. Like, for example, I'm picking up the new Miles Morales issue one. Spider-Man over there has him fighting against the enforcers from issue two of the original Spider-Man run. Oh, okay. And it looks like it's going to lead into something, but that issue is just boring to me. Mm -hmm. Oh look, he's taking on the guy with the lasso again. <laughs> you have all the cool characters from Spider-Man, including one of my favorites who's ignored, Spider-Man Noir. What a great concept. What's that? Nick Cage doing the voice of Noir. Yeah. And that ought to be a blast. As an added bonus, it's got the Scorpion showing up for at least a couple of panels. And Chip does the writing and the artwork for this. You know what? I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Wow, that's You're that's costing that's me money, sir. <laughs> If I weren't costing you money, I'd be offended. Yeah, look at this stacking. <laughs> yeah, you're as right. bad as me. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I could, uh, I could easily spend a fortune here every week. I won't. Right, right. I'll spend a small yeah. fortune. Yeah. I can't yeah, afford yeah. to spend a small fortune. I'm a full-time novelist. Have you been reading The Immortal Hulk? It's my favorite Marvel book. Dude! That thing is brilliant. I'll read that without any hesitation. I'll buy that without any hesitation. Later, I'll buy the trade paperback. Just so I won't have it all in one collection. Issue 8 was my favorite comic ever in years. When his head and body parts all... Oh yeah, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Amazing. Well again, this is what happens when you write a proper horror novel. Mm -hmm. And, you know, back in the day when he first showed up, he was a horror story. He was Jekyll and Hyde, only stronger. I didn't realize until recently those first, I think six, right? He, it actually was the moon would have to come out for him to turn. The moon would have to come out, or it would have to be nighttime. Otherwise, he's just Bruce Banner and trying to hide that fact. I never realized that was actually the original. So when I read, when I read the first of these, I was going, "That's brilliant!" Yeah. And I, I completely ignored the Immortal Hulk when it came out. I had several friends saying, dude, you're missing out and you need to try this. I'm like, okay, I trust enough of you that I'll go ahead and invest the money in this. Mm -hmm. Well played, gentlemen. Well played. I don't mind spending money on a comic book that's worth spending money on. I mind the hell out of spending $4 on a comic book that's got 21 pages of nothing. Like this. But I'm going to buy it in. I can't do it. I can't do it, brother. <laughs> Probably has six words. Well, it is a visual art, and if you're good as an artist, you can go without that. The problem is a lot of artists can't go without that. One of the big problems I had with, with Image when it first started showing up was, hey, look, here's an issue with four words and no story. Because the artist can't tell a story with his artwork. And I found a few other things. I mean, I wouldn't name names, but I wouldn't also say no to that. I read the original Spider Man's by Todd McFarlane. Yeah. Spawn's fun. He's a new, new cool concept. But he hasn't been writing that for a while. What's that? Just not executed perfectly. No. Very few of them are. Very few of them are. You want to see really amazing visual storytelling? Let's go back to The Watchmen. Yeah. And you know why? Have you ever seen the script for that? The action in every single panel, the angle for every single panel, was broken down by Alan Moore. He said, in this panel I need this, in this panel I need this. And the artist listened, and together they made a brilliant story. Alan Moore by himself? Not the best in my opinion. Uh, I have, I've tried to read his novels and they're just messes. But visual art wise, He's very good at asking somebody to do something the right way. Did you try Providence? <laughs> I wanted to like Providence. Yeah, my yeah. problem with Providence is that sooner or later he had to do what he does in everything. Let's rape somebody. Yeah. How about we don't? Right. I don't know what your fetish is or your fantasy is, but stop now. Okay. The prelude to that Neonomicon or whatever did the same thing. All of a sudden. Again and again. Yeah. Dude, get over it. He's done it in his books. He's done it. He did it in The Watchmen. It was actually an important part of the story in The Watchmen. I'm kind of willing to forgive that. V for Vendetta might have had a rape. Might have just mentioned a rape. Great story, by the way. If you haven't read that, I would. I don't need to read yet another graphic rape scene by Alan Moore. Can we just not? 
that if, think, if I was to sell these books and come down I think to even you, his swamp you, thing around there might have been a little bit of If not, he probably made allusions to it at least. Right. He, he, actually, there was. Uh, and the one with the demon and the fear monkey. Which was terrifying. It was great. The fear monkey was horrifying. It was great. That actually was, it was, it was something that Kirby created in the original run of the demon. Oh, really? And... That Alan Moore came along and brought back all the terror that should have been. But one of the things that happened, one of the kids that was in, in the home had been molested by her father. And that was the, her demon that she had to deal with. That was the fear monster, what the fear monster was feeding on with her. Brilliant stuff. But again, it was mentioned, it was alluded to, it wasn't shown in graphic detail, yeah, and I right. just don't freaking need it. Yeah, you don't need to see yeah. that. We all know that these things happen, but it doesn't mean that we have to spend ten pages on it. But, um, Maybe I'm approved in my old age. No, I agree, and I'm not old. Fair enough. I just feel old. Well, it's because the weather is cold and the joints get eaten. Uh, Avengers 700. I didn't read that yet. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, but I haven't had a chance to. I didn't read that yet. A little behind. Oh, after Christmas, I'll end up catching up again. That was one of the best issues I've read in a while, other than Hulk number eight. Yeah. When, yeah, his, Hulk, when Hulk. his head's in the jar and yeah. all his body parts are everywhere. I think Hulk number eight is one of my, f probably one of the best comic books I have ever read in my life. Yes, I agree. We've been reading comics a long time. And well, I've been reading them for even longer than you are. Just a few. Oh, well, well, no, like I said, when we, went, when we went out to dinner two weeks ago, we were looking at the age and says, man, I'm old enough to be your father. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you were old enough to be a few of our fathers, aren't I? Yep. Yep. The, uh, the only one was Ross. Me and Ross were the, me and Ross were the old guys. I think Ross is like 45 or 46. But Josh is 24. Mike's... Mike, 28. twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was old enough to be. I was old enough to be you, the rest of you guys' father. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I was looking for. You think you could order me that Venom variant? Is it out of this month? Is it? Yeah, it's from this. Um, it's like a Watchmen cover. Let me see if it's a one in. Oh, if it's a one in a hundred yeah. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Then we'll forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh, catching your interest today? Uh, a lot of Batman today. Uh, Batman Annual, Batman Who Laughs, uh, Batman Dam, which has been a really good read. Unfortunately, you can't really get the first issue anymore <laughs> because of the whole controversy. Um, yeah. Batman's not even really my favorite uh, favorite superhero, but I notice I'm buying a lot more Batman comics over Superman. So uh, that and uh, a lot of a lot of things from Image last week. Uh, the freeze was really good. Uh, this one right here, that one I would highly recommend. But uh, uh, does he does he have the other one that came out? Die, um, die from Image Comics. I don't see it up here, but that one I'd highly recommend. That one. That one was a good good read. Pickups for today. Uh, Batman, Batman Who Laughs, Batman Annual, I got Titans, that's been a really good read. Uh, Just League Dark, which I, I've never been a Dark fan, but I got into it for this run, it's been really good. Uh, Flash, Flash is my favorite, favorite comic hero, so we gotta get that. And uh, Amazing Spider-Man, the only, uh, the only Marvel comic one I'm really into, since I'm more DC than Marvel. Um, but Spider-Man, I've been reading Spider-Man since, uh, since I've been a kid. So, uh, it's never changed there. <laughs> we lost a part of ourselves. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I'm psyched for, uh... Well, for, the, for mostly the Marvel movies, I haven't really... I, I, I rarely go out to the theaters anymore. I, I didn't see, um... What was it? The last Ant-Man or, um... Uh, I waited uh, for Black Panther. I waited until that came out in Blu-ray. Um, same thing with Thor Ragnarok. Didn't see it in theaters for some reason. Like I love the Marvel movies, but it's getting to the point that it's it's hard to get excited <laughs> anymore to see every like two or three a year. Uh, but Avengers was the big one. Avengers is the big one that I had to I had to go first showing of, uh, and that'll probably be the same way this year. Captain Marvel looks really 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 good, but again, it's the solo ones. I'm I wait until they come come out into DVD these days uh, just because it's getting more and more expensive to go to the theater especially uh, now again now that I'm buying more and more comics I have less and less of a budget to go and see uh, to go see the uh, comic movies in theaters plus it's
plus I, I enjoy uh, watching it on my big screen with the couch. It's just more comfortable at home. Aquaman, uh, I... It looks good. I've been burnt before. DC, I've always said DC makes fantastic trailers. They make fantastic trailers that make the movie look good, but there's, it's usually more style over substance. Um, but again, everything I've been hearing about uh, Aquaman is really, really positive. Just just the fun popcorn well, like everyone is saying. So yeah, I'll check it out. Uh, again, another movie I'll definitely check out when it comes out. I still have to check out Venom, which, uh, which again, uh, I guess a lot of my friends really liked Venom for what it was. Um, it's a fun movie. That's that's what everyone keeps saying. It's a, it's a very fun movie movie to watch so I'm I'm gonna wait until it comes out in blu-ray next week and pick it up and check it out so I'm excited for that movie too because it looks like just one of those theaters you grab popcorn you go sit down and enjoy an hour and a half of some action some laughing and that's that's all yeah that's all I ask for comic book movies I think that's even why I fed up fell off some of the Netflix stuff is it's, it's like the Netflix Daredevil and stuff they're, they're really great movie uh, really great shows but for, for me, I want a little bit of... I want fun and colorful and everything Marvel has kind of been, as opposed to DC, where, again, they take Batman, who is dark and gritty, and it works for Batman, but then they try to do that for everybody. And it's like, dark and gritty doesn't work for Superman. Dark and, dark and gritty doesn't work for, like, Green Lantern and things like that. So, Oh, yeah, Wonder Woman was the first one they kind of knocked out of the park. And, again, I heard great things about Aquaman, especially after... After Justice League, which I enjoyed Justice League, I thought the villain was, was wasn't that great, but I didn't I, I didn't hype it up to being like the, oh my god like I was like tempering expectations, and I waited until that came out on Blu-ray, and I was like oh yeah it's not that bad, it's not like I invested eighteen dollars into watching this movie, so you know it was good for what it was. It just it 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 wasn't the greatest movie I think so. Um, I didn't like the representation of the guy who played the Flash, though. As a, as a longtime Flash fan, Ezra Miller, good actor. I just hated his take on Barry Allen. I really, really enjoy the TV show. Um, I know it's like hit or miss sometimes, but um, the, yeah, the TV show has me hooked. Especially after uh, this weekend's, they had the uh, they had the cro big crossover event, and at the end they they teased the uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. So they had the big screen at the end that said Crisis on Infinite and Earth, Fall 2019. And that got me excited. A live action is finally going to do Crisis on Infinite and Earth. Now I'm just hoping they do it well. Because <laughs> they didn't do Flashpoint well, unfortunately, on the show. Flashpoint was like one episode. How his character was written, his mannerisms, he was almost like... There was a little lack of confidence. And he was very twitchy and fidgety, and I didn't really... I didn't, I didn't really like it. I didn't really like it. I, I, I prefer how they portrayed on The Flash, where he's a little bit more, has a little bit more confidence, and he's not like inept to talking to people. He has friends and things like that, as opposed to this uh, Barry Allen, where it seems like he's just like a, a loner who's twitchy and just really awkward. And I, didn't, I, I really didn't like that, uh, that depiction of Flash. I'm really not looking forward to a Flash movie with that familiar. <laughs> I want them to, to get Grant, uh, Grant Gustin there. Maybe do a flash movie on that. I, I like the shared universe idea, but I, I feel like they're trying to steer away from that now. And then with the whole Superman Batman talk, it's they're with the um, the guys who are playing Superman and Batman talking about there's rumors that they're leaving, and I I think it's all in flux. I think they tried way too hard um, to try to to copy Marvel, and it didn't work out the way they wanted to. <laughs> I think I think. I think they might need to go to standalone movies, but it's re it's going to be really hard to kind of kind of pull themselves out of this one. I'm rooting for DC. I'm I've been a DC DC kid all my life, and it's just unfortunate that we we can't get any good uh, representation up there, <laughs> except for Batman. I liked Ben Affleck as Batman, and I really want to see what they what he can do with it with more time and his own movie. But I don't. I, I think Ben Affleck is done. I don't think he's coming back as uh, Batman after uh, after the last outing, at the last two outings. So it's the movie, the script that they were given, and you you can only do so much with that. 
I think there's just too uh, too much control at the top. The people who don't read the comics, the like the CEOs and the head of movies. I think there's just too much pull there. I don't I don't think they have as much. Everyone wants the Zack Snyder cut, but everyone hated Zack Snyder up to that point because they were like Zack Snyder's ruining the DC universe. So it's just it's weird. It's just weird how the fans took that. It's like, oh, wait, no, J let's get the Zack Snyder cut. I'm like, it's Zack Snyder cut is probably not going to be as good as everyone thinks it's going to be. I think I think it's hope. I think we're all, everyone's on hope that the Zack Snyder cut is a better cut. But Zack Snyder is, for me, Zack Snyder is all um, style over substance. I think he, he makes some very flashy movies. I, there's just rarely any depth there. And... Um, Still, that interview where he he was trying to find a way of getting Superman out of there, so Batman pulls a, uh, pulls the Justice League in. He's like, "Oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll do a Death of Superman storyline to take him out." And I was like, "Oh, you're using the Death of Superman, one of like the biggest stories, as a as a device to get Superman out of the move, out of the uh, Justice League." Now, I'm not I'm not I'm not a super huge Zack Snyder fan, so uh, Snyder cut or not, it was that your father came in while you were here. I. Uh, I don't think it was going to be any better than what it was. <laughs> That's the same thing with Michael Bay. I mean, those explosions and everything, they look great, but they don't hold up for two hours. I mean, it's sometimes too much of a good thing. <laughs> I think that's it. Mm. Wait, uh, so adding dye, uh, the freeze, I enjoyed I did enjoy that. I enjoyed that too. Uh, old Lady Harley. I'm enjoying that storyline. And... Um, uh, Middle West. I have nothing think they can do a better one. I do. Yeah. Um, like I said, I'm still looking for a one. Need to wait for a one. Like this. Uh, this is nice. I don't have to worry this about that. Got it. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, uh, Devin got it. I don't know if I like the artwork uh, better. Okay. The covers. And, uh, the stories yeah. are good too. You know. Okay. Uh, so it's the other. Batman who left. I think that's it. Awesome. This is. Die freeze, Lady Harley. Die, freeze, Lady Harley. And yeah, I think I there was a countdown. Movie. That's gonna be good. Coming out next week for this I, it's it's been it's been spaced out, so it's kind of hard to remember. You know, that's, that's age. Skybound. Oh man. Died. Oh, right. Glenn gives me a lot of leeway. Yeah, there's a. They can do. They can write anything else with people from the metal stuff. I'll probably never read it. You know. It's, <laughs> like, I, like I said, you're, you're trolling with the metal, Dark Knight's metal right yeah. here. You're done. <laughs> yeah. Someone can come back and say it's the best book that's ever been written. Yeah. They could, they could say it's the best book they've ever written. I still won't pick it up to read it. I read enough stuff that um, I'm yep. good. $30. Awesome. That was going to be more. Oh, 39 I always think it's going to be more than... But yeah, the, uh, the I just need to start just overcharging you then. You know, it's... <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds about right. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of my friends like Prodigy. I... It was, I thought it was good. Mm -hmm. I just not not gonna continue with it. Yeah. It, it didn't capture me that much as yeah. much as uh, Die and Freeze yeah. last week. I, I really enjoyed Freeze. Um, I liked Die also. Yeah. Um, it, well, it caught me with the whole Jumanji with D and D. Yeah. I was just like, oh, this is and it, the book went really fast. It was just like, all right, they're playing it as kids, then they warp out and they're adults, and then they're you know 20 years 25 years later yeah. in the future and then they're back in it's like wow that that moved lightning fast yeah and it's kind of good yeah it, it was good it was the the thing moved fast you uh -huh. got you felt as though you got your money's worth out of the book oh yeah there were some of these ones that move forever slow with no words in the book too and it still takes six it takes six issues to to get, you would take six issues to get that ki those kids to actually become adults now for like we got it all in three pages you know it's all right here we are we're back we're now adults and yeah you got the entire story in one comic book yeah. it's like you understood every aspect of it and it ended perfectly with that uh, with just just the, that that whole ending itself yeah it yeah. was it was just like, all right, now I got to see more, and I'm intrigued to see where they go with it. If they, because I really want to see what happened in that two year time frame that they were, right? That they were in that world. It's like, are they gonna, are they gonna, are Do they gonna flashbacks? Are they gonna flashback to when what happens? Why people lost their arm? And if they're telling the story while they're in the world now, yep. Um, just it, it may, it could just be done in dialogue too. You know, it's like, well, you, oh, yeah. you know, you idiot, you're the cause of my arm being being cut off, or. 
or whatever too, you know. But I mean, I think I think you can get two stories out of it. You, you, what's going on here? Then doing the little doing little flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. That was probably my favorite book behind uh, it, ahead of uh, the freeze. The freeze. Yeah, that did grasp me too. Yeah. They're just like, oh, what happens if you can unfreeze people? And yeah. and he's the only one because he got zapped with the electricity while it, while that it, that it. Uh, or did that, that cause that whole right. chain of reaction thing? So. Yeah, that's an, that's another one. Uh, image co- image comics with their own ones are kind of like I said, they're killing it, and I'm enjoying the image stuff a little bit more than the superhero stuff right now. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that me too. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the independent stuff I'm liking more than the superhero stuff. Uh-huh. All right, I gotta get out of here. All right, <laughs> <laughs> All right. see you later, Richard. Thank you.